Uh, good evening, uh, this is Nick from Cotswold Fireworks and I've been lucky enough to see a uh, one of the most recent versions of Finale 3D and where it is right now, what is it? We're talking October 2016. Uh, the software is by no means completely ready, this is a, a, a real early alpha um, it's not out for beta testing, uh, but it's just to give you an idea that there's lots of hard work going on in the uh, in the back end of this new Finale 3D software design. So what we're going to do today, just uh, as a quick, uh, very quick uh, demo, is show you one aspect of the program that was demonstrated to me earlier on this week, um, which just blew me away. I'm not sure if this um, little feature that we're going to look at is used in any other fireworks design software but uh, when I saw it, it was a case of wow that's brilliant I really do like this and um, to be honest in all my fire design shows I'm never at my level where we're doing in doing thousand to ten thousand pound shows I probably never want to use this feature but uh, if you're doing the stuff um, at the uh, the top end uh, three hundred thousand pound shows and Olympics and bits and pieces you probably will want to use this feature but uh, before I waffle on any further let's let's um, have a look and uh, see what you think so uh, we're looking at the main window and um, what we have here is a timeline underneath and it by default gives you nine firing positions to play with and we have nothing attached on those firing systems you can zoom in and zoom out you can pan left and right and you can rotate around which let's face it you can do pretty much in any any 3d program but where it becomes interesting is uh, being able to put 3d models into the system so if we go up to scenery and we go to uh, models and we want to browse and download a SketchUp model and it warns you that it's going to go across to SketchUp that's fine by me so off you go and up comes a warehouse and um, being the fact that I was at a conference today at this site we are going to search for Twickenham Stadium which is um, if you play rugby in the UK or watch rugby in the UK you'll know it uh, pretty quickly so there we are and you have quite a wide range of um, a couple of the Twickenham stadiums here we go there's three on the top there and um, I have actually already downloaded this Twickenham stadium over here but um, th all you do is just click on the button and down it comes as an image file or should we say a 3D SketchUp file that can be installed in Finale 3D so once you've clicked download the file has downloaded you go back to Finale 3D uh, back to your scenery, uh, back to models and you do add model and it will find the model from your downloads well that's what I'm going to use so I'll have that one please and in this case it goes to warn me it's a rather large file and it's got a lot of polygons in it continue at your own risk as I said this program is very much still in the design mode but today we're just going to show off that uh, it really can do this so we'll continue and because I've already tried and played and tested with this model it brought it in instantly uh, if you had brought in a brand new model it would take about 20 seconds to read in all the vertexes and all the polygons and uh, and build it up but uh, there we are we now have a model 3D model of the Twickenham Stadium and as I said I've been here today I've stayed in the Marriott Hotel which is positioned here the main entrance to the stadium here and we had a conference in here at, uh, and then most of the entrances for walking into the grounds are along here and there's a nice big spiral to get to the upper tiers. Uh, the colour isn't correct so uh, as I said this is work in progress but it uh, gives you an idea of uh, what we have. Now the firing positions are in the wrong place so let's select all those and just drag them out the way. You saw the colour change then. Uh, we'll just drag them there for a the minute and we can zoom in so as you can see it is a fairly big model in bits and pieces and well while we're here let's put these positions on the roof so we'll just select one position uh, a position when it's selected is white when it's unselected it's yellow we'll start with position 9 left click select drag it across onto the uh, onto the 3d um, model and as you can see it will angle depending on the surface that it's on so what we'll do is we're just going to grab it up 
and uh, we're going to pop it on the end there and we'll mess around with it in a minute and we'll grab eight and let's get it up on the roof as well and seven we'll grab that up onto the roof in fact we're going to put them all on the roof to be honest but uh, uh, just grab them in order you could you could rubber band and select multiple positions at the same and drag them all up I'm just going to do it this way because um, I like clicking on things so there we go right um, pop it around uh, zoom in a bit and as you can see some of the positions I've picked the angles in the gantry this is a rather complex 3d model of Twickenham Stadium and so when we uh, were dragging the positions around they will go sideways or upright depending on uh, whether they're actually on the roof or whether they're actually against the metalwork of the roof and we just going to drag those around to get them nice and flat I don't really want to uh, to put them on the on the metal. Let's bring that one back a bit so you can see it. And right on the edge. Ooh, grab that one about there, please. And there. Come on, flatten it out. This, as I say, is all to be tuned. Uh, but it does show you that there's been a lot of work, an awful lot of work on the uh, the program, and um, and and more to come. But uh, da -da -da, let's get that one out down there, please. I was say it's probably because I just spun that around I've put it all over the place. There we go, it's nice and flat now. And eight. They are very close together. I should have spread them out a bit, shouldn't I? There we are. Maybe we'll spread them out now. There we are. Boop, 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 boop. Fiddly fiddly. Uh, do, do, ba -dum. Yeah, but every two, isn't it? Every two gantries. That's ah, nicely spread. It's a bit better, isn't it? I suppose we could always go around the corner a bit. Yep, get that one. There we are. Put that one down flat. Flat. There we are. Okay, so we got our rooftop positions. Uh, zoom out. As I say, you can use the uh, the wheel mouse on the mouse to zoom in now, or you can go up and down there and get a nice zoom. That's for panning, and the one on the left is for rotation left and right and up and down and of course zoom in and then pan and we're now inside the stadium uh, as you say it's uh, pretty powerful um, there we go so what we'll do rubber band select all those and uh, just for a bit of fun if we select our parts catalog and I've got this shrunk down just to fit inside the window for you my screens a lot bigger than the window we're using so normally I uh, um, do uh, a little bit more so I'm not going to do a search, I'm just going to find a couple of, there you go, two and a half inch red mines. And uh, that one's wrong, as you can see, that one's on the side instead of being flat. But it gives us an idea that we just need to straighten that one up. And we've got them all unselected, so edit, undo that move, thank you. Uh, click to select that one, there we go nice and flat flat position please just like that um, I'm sure that uh, Will and everyone at Finale 3D are going to find better ways of moving these positions around on top of a 3D model or picking a 3D model which doesn't have all this complex grand tree, uh, gantry which uh, in the fire simulation is it necessary to have all that complex gantry who knows so at five seconds we just fire off a selection of comets and as you can see they they just launch up like that and if we want we can look from the upper side of the stadium and zoom in and uh, get ourselves inside the stadium and uh, and, uh, and launch there we are and uh, it works 3D models in so imported straight from SketchUp just by selecting it in SketchUp clicking download clicking install and bang there's your model um, now that's one trick the other thing that actually got me uh, extremely impressed was at the moment this 3D model is on a green football pitch. Uh, what you can now do is go back to scenery and change the background that you're using. But in this case, our background we are going to get from satellite imagery. And it instantly looks on Google Maps. And if you know the uh, coordinates, which Google Maps will give you if you search for an item, you can put it in there. However, if you also know the name of, of the... Uh, um, if I could type properly the uh, name of the area that you want then by all means 
just tape that and uh, this will uh, incredibly uh, good there we go uh, it's picked up Google Maps um, there is a little bit of work to do in scaling of the map to make sure it's the same scale as the SketchUp uh, if the SketchUp has been drawn to scale then obviously it will appear at the right scale the fireworks are then in scale with, with what's going on with the SketchUp drawing and would be in scale with the with the map uh, if we just um, drag that stadium over we can miss, unlock the model move it over and you can uh, rotate the model slightly so that um, you get it exactly in line with the, uh, the thing and now you can uh, lock the model as you see the colors aren't quite right but that's all to be sorted out uh, later on of course now what you can do is if you are firing and you were looking straight over the top uh, you could see how big the bursts were on, are on some shells so let's put some shells in shall we let, let, let there. what have we got a red chrysanthemum in four inches about there okay we've only done one selection so if I rubber band the rest and do that as well so what was that a red chrysanthemum in four inches and now we have a bursting diameter uh, over the top of the roof of the stadium or from the side bursting height to give you an idea of launching four inches from the roof I wouldn't suggest you launch four inch shells from the roof of the stadium the stadium is slightly is going to vibrate a little bit and I wouldn't like to guarantee that the roof can the roof trusses could handle the launch uh, stresses involved but um, there's no reason why in the simulation we couldn't add a bunch of orange peonies at 10 inch and now we have 4 inch followed by 10 inches on the top and uh, likewise looking from the top gives you an idea of um, their spread um, in comparison to the stadium underneath uh, so can't zoom out any further than that um, that's uh, maybe coming in uh, in the program later but uh, here we are um, 3D models and satellite imagery inserted into uh, a finale 3D um, simulation. There's lots more to come in this program. This was just a very, very short snippet just to show you two aspects of what you can now do in finale 3D and where your work is going. Uh, you can see that there's an awful lot of time has been put into writing this program, which is why it uh, uh, hasn't made the light of day yet. There's still quite a lot to do with the program. Uh, you can simulate system uh, displays in it. Um, I've done a couple of little displays simulated just to show that it all works and um, the selection of pyro is a lot easier, um, installation of pyro onto your um, positions is a lot easier, timeline um, is is um, is looking good, I think it still needs work uh, but Will has my input on that and uh, is taking input from other firing companies as well uh, to polish this product. Um, but anyway that's Nick from Cotswold Fireworks having uh, and showing a quick demo of uh, 3D modeling and satellite imagery in uh, the new Finale 3D due to be released sometime in the future, can't say when, don't know when, uh, but um, hope you like it and um, if we find something else that's as exciting we'll let you know. Thank you and good night.